The new fully electric Jeep Avenger is the most important Jeep for a decade. We've been saying it for what feels like forever. The last time was only a few months ago, in fact, and we had a poke around the car in a studio. We stated it previously when we drove a prototype late last year and even before that, when the covers were pulled off a few months ago. But truthfully, it all comes down to this, our first proper drive of the car that you'll see in showrooms really soon. But while it might be the most important Jeep for a decade, it's not really very Jeep at all, is it? It's got a single electric motor, no petrol engine whatsoever. It's front wheel drive, and it's based on the same platform as a Peugeot 2008 and a Vauxhall Mocha. But regardless, electric is the future, and Jeep bosses want us to forget about what we think in our heads Jeep is supposed to be, and look at this as the kind of next phase of Jeep in Europe. They're calling this the Bev Wave. The nearest dam at 250 mile range is competitive, and visually at least it's got the style that buyers in this class so desperately crave. There's the familiar seven slot grille, almost as recognisable as Mercedes three pointed star or the sleek side profile of a Porsche 911, but there's more. The Avenger has been designed to withstand the rough and tumble of city life. The headlights are set in slightly to be less susceptible to damage, and the bumpers get black cladding that's more resistant to knocks and scuffs. Jeep says all this could save you actual money over the life of the car. Now you may remember a few months ago we had a bit of a look around the interior of the Avenger, but that was a pre-production model, so seeing as we've got the finished article here, we're going to have another little look around. So, well, what have we got? We've got a nice wide kind of dashboard with flashes of colour, all looks kind of really nice, young, funky. I really quite like it in here actually. The quality, very good indeed. Steering wheel feels nicely wrapped in leather. You've got soft touch materials all over the dash. These seats, they're super comfortable as well. Storage is really good. Jeep says there's 34 litres in here. And while I can't confirm or deny it, there is some useful cubbies. You've got this one down here. It's got a kind of iPad style cover on it. We weren't sure if that was gonna make production, but turns out it has. The first bit folds over and kind of is held with a magnet, nice all fine. The second bit, not so much, so you kind of take it, take that or leave it. Big bin down there though, you've got room for, well, everything. You've got some water in here, sunglasses, keys, sort of wireless charging pad down there as well. You can charge your mobile phone. There's another spot down here. This one isn't covered, but you've got space for a couple of cup holders and then there's another bin under the armrest. Another thing we really like are the climate controls along here. I've been saying it for a long time, but having physical controls to adjust the temperature and the fan speed on the move is a win in our eyes. The gear selectors, I'm not such a fan of those. They don't feel enormously intuitive, but I guess if you're driving this car every day, you would get used to those. You've got a drive mode switch down here as well. That's lifted from the 2008, but we'll talk about those a little bit more when we're driving. But yeah, just overall, a really cool, funky cabin. There are three specs to choose from when ordering a new Jeep Avenger. Longitude, Latitude and Summit. Prices start from £35,700 and all cars get 16-inch alloy wheels, LED lights, climate control and cruise control plus that 10.25-inch screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Altitude brings an automatic tailgate, 17-inch wheels, keyless entry and a bigger instrument cluster. Summit, which still comes in at under £40,000, gets even larger 18-inch wheels, heated front seats, wireless phone charging and a rear view camera. There are various option bundles and things like leather seats and a panoramic roof will be available to order later in 2023. Now, as we just mentioned, all cars get a 10.25 inch screen up here in it. All really works quite nicely. So you can use full screen mapping like this, press the home button, you've got this tile formation, you can move things around so you can have the settings and, and features that you use the most on that main screen. There's widgets as well, and it's all really nice and responsive. You can have full screen TomTom -tom mapping, again, nice and easy to use. And then over here, you've got a set of digital instruments. On this car, on the top spec cars, you get 10.25 inch, exactly the same size as this main central screen, but on the cheaper models, it's a seven inch display. Now we haven't actually seen what that one looks like, so it's difficult to recommend whether or not to step up on that alone, but obviously you get other little bits and bobs as you step up through the range. Every Avenger gets a new 51 kilowatt hour usable battery, the same one found in the updated DS3 and even the Citroen EC4. Jeep says the car will do up to 248 miles on a charge, but crucially, as many as 360 miles or 550 kilometers in town. 
We found it to be pretty efficient actually. Four miles per kilowatt hour seemed genuinely achievable, which translates to a real world range in excess of 200 miles. All cars come with 100 kilowatt rapid charging. And while we don't want to get sucked into the marketing speak, even that allows for a recharge of 30 kilometers or 18.6 miles, more than the average daily mileage of a British driver in just three minutes. A 20 to 80% top up takes 24 minutes. Now, it'd be fair to say that in the past, the Jeep name, the Jeep badge, has never been particularly famed for on-road driving manners. I mean, sure, it's fine off-road, but when it comes to tarmac, well, the car's mud-plugging prowess and rock-crawling ability, I mean, there was compromises to be made. But now, all that has gone out the window. For now, at least, every Avenger is front-wheel drive, and taking parts from the Peugeot 2008, well, it's worked wonders for this car's handling. And let's be honest, very few people are going to buy a car like this to drive up mountains like we are, or across rutted terrain. No, it's far more important that a car like this is comfortable and quiet. Now, speaking of comfort, this car is inherently quite stiff. You feel that when you go over speed bumps, but it's not uncomfortable, and that level of stiffness, it only adds to this car's composure. One thing I would actually say this thing is lacking is a bit of front end grip, and well, maybe that would improve by a second motor on the back axle, you might just get a little bit more grip, a little bit more traction, but overall, it drives really nicely. It isn't the quickest car, 154 horsepower, might sound like a decent amount, but in this age of instant acceleration with your EVs, well, yeah, you don't get that necessarily in the Avenger, even in sport mode with the full whack of power and torque. Now, for all its ability on-road, I know we've said this is not a proper Jeep, but it's got plenty of drive modes. You've got eco, normal, sport, you've got mud, sand, and snow, and there's a hill descent control mode, and it's got 200 millimeters of ground clearance. And with those short front and rear overhangs, it makes no issue of kind of dipping down into stony car parks like we are here around Malaga in Spain. Do you know what? I think as small SUVs go, this one is much more adept at crossing muddy fields or rutted terrain than most. And don't worry, we've been assured there's extra protection for the battery underneath as well. Now, Jeep reckons that you can fit five people comfortably back here, and while I'm not sure that's quite true, there is more space back here than you might expect. I'm just over six foot tall and I have got enough knee room, but headroom is particularly impressive, and that's because the roof line stays tall all the way to the back. But yeah, just in terms of space, there is enough for two tall adults to sit side by side. There isn't really that much in terms of storage back here. It seems that Jeep did all of that up the front, so you've only got some pockets on the back of the seats. There are no door bins and there's no vents or climate control back here, just a single USB. So a bit of a mixed bag, if you ask me. The boot isn't that bad either. It's one meter wide and gets a nice square opening. And at 380 liters, it's a match for most cars in this class. In short, don't write the Avenger off on size alone. This could prove a really practical family car. If you remove any preconceptions of what you think the Jeep brand should or shouldn't be, and we recommend on this evidence that you do exactly that, then the Jeep Avenger is a really capable small SUV. You're not buying one of these to carry five people and their luggage. You're not buying one of these if you're gonna cover hundreds of miles every week. And we'd wager you're not buying a small crossover if you wanna go hardcore off-roading. The Jeep Avenger is a friendly, urban, electric vehicle with charm and style by the bucket load. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric and hybrid car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Finally, while you're here, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to ensure you never miss a video.